But listen, I don't want any more bullshit. bullshit. Yo, what's up, what's up, bullshit free gang? It's your man, Harkon Ajala, a.k.a. the bad boy genius at your motherfucking service as always. Look, everybody's talking about it. Carson Wentz, will he be traded to the Colts, to the Bears? Should the Colts trade for him? What should they trade for him? Or, in simple Ebonics, should the Colts fuck with Carson Wentz or not? Or, for the Ebonics challenge, uh, let's just say... Should the Colts expend the necessary draft capital and assets to acquire Carson Wentz as their franchise quarterback for now and into the future? You pick whichever one works for you. Either way, we're going to dive into this shit. Everybody's been talking about it, and there's been a whole lot of, frankly, bullshit being thrown about. Everybody's in their feelings. I'm going to cut to the chase, skip all that bullshit, and keep it 100 with you, all right? So, let me welcome you, my friend back to or to if this is your first time here the one and only world's famous official bullshit free Colts podcast baby this is the only place in the world where you can hear all things Colts all the things fit to be talked about that have to do with our beloved Colts but here you're going to hear it with 100 percent no coach speak no PR no spin no political correctness and as always and most importantly 100% no fucking bullshit. Now, we're going to dive into the question everybody wants to talk about. Should the Colts fuck with Carson Wentz or not? And we're going to dive into it the way I always do, which is without all the narrative, without all the bluster, without all the feelings and bias and people just talking out of their ass. But before we do, as always, let me ask you really quickly to help us out by taking your player ass finger and smashing that like button right below this podcast or podcast video and help us out with the YouTube algorithm or the Google algorithm. That'll help us be exposed and shown to more real deal Colts fans like yourself, all right? We appreciate that. This is a labor of love. So make sure you like, hit that button right now, share this video with your peeps and subscribe to the channel. And last but not least, if you appreciate what we're giving you, If this is valuable, if you enjoy it, please take a second. There are three ways you can donate to us right below. Hit one of those donate buttons. Give us 20 bucks, 10 bucks, five bucks, even $1. Everything and anything helps us to bring you more of the kind of content that you fucking desire. You feel me? All right. That out of the way. Let's chop it the fuck up. Now, I talked about Carson Wentz. In really my last two podcasts, I talked about him as what I call one of the reclamation project options. So Carson being a guy who was drafted number two in the draft by the Eagles, he was drafted to be a franchise quarterback. The Eagles thought he was their franchise quarterback. He was their franchise quarterback up until this year, I guess, because he played so horrible. You know, they drafted Jalen Hurts young quarterback in the second round this year and because Carson played so horrible over the first 12 games they benched him and they went to Jalen Hurts and apparently Carson didn't take too well to that whatever the case whatever all the machinations behind the scenes there in Philadelphia I don't really give a fuck bada beam bada boom here we are divorce is imminent they both decide they want to move on Carson's on the trading block now I told you in the last podcast I would talk specifically about Carson Wentz for a couple of reasons. Number one, because there's been a lot of chatter about the Colts and the Bears being the two most likely destinations for Carson. It looks like they're the only two teams really, really interested on a serious level. And apparently Carson has made it fairly clear that he prefers the Colts. So that's the first reason. The second reason is because I knew that Carson Wentz, and I feel like Carson Wentz is one of the better options or one of the options that should be seriously considered by the Colts in terms of looking for who their starting quarterback is going to be, not just in 2021 coming up this season, but at this point, after three years with three different starting quarterbacks, you had fucking Andrew Luck just quit on you. Then you went to Jacoby Brissett. He was trash and got injured and then you went to Philip Rivers he was pretty good but he's at the tail end of his career and then he retired after this uh, previous season this past season 
So, you know, after having three starting quarterbacks, three different starting quarterbacks over the last three years, it's time now to fucking kind of settle this quarterback position for the Colts for the next five to ten years, okay? Particularly because the team is constructed so well and it's got so many of the bases covered. They are very close. They're not there yet, but they are very close to being a Super Bowl contender and getting a franchise quarterback for the long term is the biggest piece to that puzzle. Not the only piece, but the biggest piece. All right. So because it's gotten so serious in terms of talk about trading Carson to the Colts, I wanted to really devote an entire podcast to this because, like I said before, there's a lot of bullshit flying around. A lot of people in their feelings, a lot of emotions, a lot of talk back and forth from pundits, talking heads, podcasters, etc. Everybody's talking about it. So I want to cut through all the noise and get to the signal. So let's talk about Carson Wentz. Should the Colts fuck with him? Because there are a lot of Colts fans who are not just skeptical, but a lot of Colts fans are like, fuck, no, we don't want this guy. He's trash. He was trash in Philadelphia. Philadelphia doesn't want him. Why in God's name would we want him? Well, Let's deep dive and and dig down and and I'll show you why the Colts should be and are interested in Carson Wentz. All right. So there's been a lot of talk about Carson's last season being trash this past season. And quite frankly, it was trash. And now if you go, if you've been listening to me for a while, you know that I said myself mid season, Carson Wentz looks like he's pretty broken to me, but Look, that was at first glance and without really looking closely. So let's go back and let's really take a measured, logical, rational look at this shit like a GM who's building a team or an owner who's building a team would look at it. Okay, so this past season, Carson was trashed. Yes, he was. Um, He played 12 games. His completion percentage was just 57.4 percent. He threw for twenty six hundred and twenty yards, six yards per pass play he has 16 tds and this is the part that's really fucked up 15 interceptions 15 interceptions and let me say along with that 15 interceptions he had 19 total turnovers so he had four more fumbles that he lost he had six fumbles four of them lost um he got sacked 50 times let me say that one more time let me say that one more again he got sacked 50 fucking times in just 12 games. Now that's important. It's important that we throw that out there because let me tell you, that's damn near five times a game. Any quarterbacks getting sacked five times a game is not likely to have a great season. All right. Unless we're talking about some freak like um, Deshaun Watson, most quarterbacks, they're getting sacked 50 times in 12 games. I mean, you extrapolate that out. You're talking about 60-plus sacks in a 16-game season, maybe 65. That ain't good. No, I mean, almost any quarterback's not going to do well. They're not going to have a good season, all right? But here's the thing, and this is why you have to look inside the numbers. This past season was Carson Wentz's worst, without a doubt. But can you judge him on that, on just that? Should you? Because here's the deal. If you look at all of his seasons, okay, just last season, Carson Wentz, his uh, quarterback rating, 72.8 this season. Last season, just last season, he was at 93.1. Just last season, he threw for 4,039 yards, a 6.7 per pass play average, 27 touchdowns, and just seven interceptions. Now, that was just last season. Same basic team. Now, let's look at 2018. 69.6% completion percentage, damn near 70%. 3,000 yards. He only played 11 games because he got injured. 21 touchdowns, just seven interceptions. A 102.2 rating. Now, his big season, you all know, 2017, he was in the MVP race and probably would have won it if he didn't get injured and missed the last three games. This is the year they won the Super Bowl. 13 games Carson played in 2017. All right. 60% completion rate, 3,200 yards in 13 games, a 7.5 average pass per play. Outstanding. 
33 touchdowns, just seven interceptions. All right. He took 28 sacks, only had four fumbles. He was 101.9 rating. Now, that was his second year in the league. His rookie year, which you expect to be kind of shaky for every rookie, he wasn't bad. 3,700 yards, a 6.2 pass play average, 16 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Rookie, okay. He took 33 sacks, fumbled nine times, rating 79.3. So what are we looking at here? Now, there's two ways you can look at this. You could say, well, I mean, Wentz is trending downward. He was 79.3 his rookie year. Then he went up to 101.9. Then he went up to 102.2 in rating. Then he dropped to 93.1 in 2019. Then he went to 72.8 in 2020. He's trending the wrong way. Let me suggest to you that what might really be going on there is not so much Carson Wentz trending the wrong way, is the fucking Eagles was trending the wrong way. Their offensive line was trending the wrong way. Their weapons or lack thereof was trending the wrong way. And if you notice, his sacks creeped up. That The amount of sacks that he took every year creeped up as well. So is it Wentz that just suddenly got trash? He went from MVP to just trash? Or was it the Eagles? Let's remember the Eagles... After that 2017 Super Bowl season, the Eagles, as, as happens to a lot of Super Bowl winners, each year the team got a little worse in terms of their winning record, etc. Last year, I think they won five games, four or five games. So we got to look a little deeper than just one terrible season that Wentz had last year. When we look at his overall numbers and we look at what he has done, there is a lot of evidence there that if you take this guy and you stick him on a team that has a great offensive line, that has a super strong running game, a team that has some weapons, particularly tight end and some and some young, explosive wide receivers, uh, maybe a young, explosive hybrid running back, jack of all trades like Nyan Himes. You have a great defense, and then you have a coach, a coach that is very good with quarterbacks, maybe a coach that has even worked with Carson before. I mean, you get where I'm going, right? Into the motherfucking Indianapolis Colts, all right? The simple truth of the matter is there's every reason to believe that if you transplant Carson Wentz from a very bad Eagles team to a very good Indianapolis Colts team, where he can get his confidence back. There's not going to be super pressure on him. He won't have to come in here and try to be uh, Tom Brady and be Superman, put the team on his back. All he needs to do is come in here and play good football within himself and let the weapons around him and a stout defense help him win games. There's every reason to believe that this guy can be a franchise quarterback and move back into a top 10, if not top, seven eight maybe even top five quarterback now that you might think well you're just trying to blow sunshine and rainbows up my ass you're you're being over optimistic i'm really not i'm saying looking at everything there's every reason to believe that carson will at minimum i'd say his floor would be he'd be a capable starter a capable starter that's able to make plays when you need them And then, of course, his ceiling is you could have a top five elite quarterback. And if you get that, the Colts are an immediate Super Bowl contender and a strong one. All right. Now, lest you think I'm being over optimistic, I told you this ain't about uh, emotions. This ain't about just being in my feelings or just, you know, hoping and wishing on a star. Besides just looking at the stats, use your eyes. Use the eye test. If you go and you take a look at just the highlights and the lowlights of Carson Wentz from this past 2020 season, and I'm going to link to a couple of videos so you can see both his highlights and his lowlights, okay, from 2020, so that you can get a measured, uh, logical, rational look. You can have all the data. You can have, uh, you know, both sides. Here's what you're going to see because here's what became very clear to me. When you look at his highlights, you see the pros about Carson Wentz. The dude has a fucking cannon arm. Ain't no doubt about it. 
I mean, he's 6'5", he's 237, all right? He is surprisingly mobile. He's actually very mobile. And he's pretty accurate throwing on the run. Now, every Colts fan knows, we've talked about this for multiple years now, you need a quarterback to at least be decently mobile in, in this league. I mean, other outside of Tom Brady and a few others, for the most part, you need a quarterback to be mobile. You need a quarterback to be able to make plays with his feet. Not all the fucking time like Lamar Jackson, but when necessary. Okay? Because defenses have gotten good and they're fast. That is a huge, huge extra, huge bonus to have a mobile quarterback. And if you go and you look, Carson Wentz, to be a big motherfucker, he's he's actually pretty quick and, and, and very nimble, I have to say. Much more so than I thought. Carson's just 28 years old. He has a history of MVP level play. In other words, we've seen him do it. It's not just projection or maybe or we hope or no shit like that. We've seen him do it for a year or two. Okay. And also, and this is a big one, although a lot of people may feel like it's overplayed. This is a big one. He has a relationship, a trust, and he has a lot of familiarity with both Frank Reich and Frank Reich's system, a system that's very QB friendly. So this is a guy who can come right in, feel comfortable, trust being coached by Frank, trust Frank, what Frank is doing, listening to Frank. I know there's been some shit out there about him, you know, maybe not taking great coaching. Let's talk about that. That might be one of the cons that, that brings some risk, but let's talk about the cons. We've talked about the pros, and like I said, you can go see those. The cons, well, uh, he did have a trash season. He did have a trash season this past season. So we have to ask, is he salvageable, or has he learned bad habits from that season, or are those bad habits that were already there that were manifesting, okay? Uh, so... That's one of the cons that, you know, that is a question you have to be concerned with. Um, questions about his leadership. That might be considered a con because there's been some rumblings that, you know, he didn't take well to being benched or being coached hard. I mean, it, I mean, there's no fucking quarterback in the league that, you know, you'd want as a starter who's going to be happy about being benched. But, you know, there's some questions maybe about his leadership. Um, I guess the other thing would have to be this. There is a risk that it doesn't work, that he comes to the Colts and he is just trash, and that would be a con because you're going to have to give up some draft capital or some assets to acquire him. Now, from what we all hear, from what I've heard, it sounds like uh, Chris Ballard, we, know, we all know Chris is stingy with his picks and what have you. He's never going to really overpay for a player when it comes to trading. He will trade. As we saw last season, he traded his first-round pick straight up and got DeForest Buckner, one of the best trades in Indianapolis Colts history. Uh, but he's not going to overpay no matter what. So there is some draft capital you're going to have to give up, and that's kind of a con. But from what we hear, um, what we hear is that uh, Chris has offered a second-round pick this year, maybe a second-rounder next year, and possibly a third- or fourth-rounder. I would say... Everything taken into account and the and the I think the the lower the okay based on the floor of the risk and the ceiling of the possible reward, I think that that's a good trade. Two low round two late round second round picks in different years and a possible third or fourth. That's a good trade, but it's a kind because you do have to give up some draft capital. But again, understand Unless you're going to somehow get Dak Prescott, uh, you're going to have to give up draft capital if you want to move up in the draft. And in doing so, you don't have any guarantee that the guy you pick is going to work out. At least with Carson Wentz, we know what we're getting. We've seen the potential in the NFL of this quarterback. We've seen this potential and what he's been able to do played out, not projected. You feel me? So again, you don't have to take my word for it. Go check out his lowlights. Go check out his highlights. What you're going to see is that in the lowlights, 
when he's making fucked up throws and throwing interceptions and fumbling the ball and making bad throws, in every case that I remember, in almost every case, he was either under pressure, he was being rushed, it was at the end of a game that they were, you know, getting badly beaten in. He was just, you know, kind of slinging it, trying to just get something on the board. And if you look at the highlights, you're going to see two things that really jump out. Two things. There's three things that really jump out to me in his highlights. When he has time, etc. He has a fucking cannon arm. He's a mobile fucker. Okay, and. He can make some wow throws. I mean, there's some, there's some wow throws in there where he is threading the fucking needle and putting the ball in some amazing places. I mean, his placement on a few of his throws is, you know, floor, jaw on the floor shit. So I say when you take all this together to answer the question, should the Colts fuck with Carson Wentz? My conclusion is if you can get the Eagles to take the draft capital that you feel is worth, then yeah, Carson Wentz is the, not only a good option, but I think he's the best option for the Colts to finally get a stable, long-term franchise quarterback in the fold so that you can take this team let this team go to its highest heights, which I believe is to get to a Super Bowl and win it multiple times. And he might even be, maybe even be a better option than Matt Stafford would have been. And as crazy as that may sound to you, the reason I'm saying that is because, let's be honest, we know that with Matt Stafford, we would have had it probably – the best thing we could have hoped for with Matt Stafford was four years of high-level quarterback play, elite quarterback play. Four years. More likely, we would have gotten two or three. With Carson Wentz, if you can get him back to playing the way he's capable of playing and he's shown that, then you've got your guy for the next eight to ten years. He's only 28, okay? You got your guy for the next eight to ten years. You don't have to worry about draft capital or anything else. All you need to do then is to continue to build around him, put more pieces in play. And like I said, over the next eight to ten years, your goal is to win a Super Bowl two or three. You with me? So stripping away all the emotion, the bias, all the bullshit, that's how I come down on it. That's how I come down on it. Yeah, the Colts should fuck with Carson Wentz. If you can get this guy... For a reasonable price, bring him the fuck in. What do you think? You think I'm on to it or you think I'm full of shit? Let me know. As always, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. <laughs> you don't understand. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Seriously, uh, I welcome some bantering back and forth, some discussion, some debate. As long as there's no bullshit in there, have at it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and donate. We appreciate you being here. And so I will say to you, as I always say, my friend, to you, my listener, my watcher, to the coach players, front office, and coaches who might be listening and watching, because I know y'all do, some of you, I will say what I always say. Let's get Carson Wentz if we can, and let's go out and win another fucking Lombardi, baby. Peace! And win another fucking Lombardi, baby. And win another... And win another fucking Lombardi, baby. And win another... And win another fucking Lombardi, baby.